Hotel Porto Nuevo. Dispense me. Yes, they put the new bulletins right now. See? Well, I don't know what says it myself, neither. <laughs> no, because I don't read it yet, either. You know myself. You call later, no? <laughs> Goodbye. I talk English, too, don't you? Please, <laughs> 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 Oh, muy bien, señorita. Gracias. Buenos dias, señor. How are you? What can I do for you? Your relations to Mr. Ryan and Mr. Dessert, haven't you? Oh, si, senor. Professor Carter, he arranged everything. Oh, is he here already? Oh, for two days ago, he's coming. He was asking where was you. He told me to put you quickly to his room when you come in. Jose. Si, senor. Put the senor to Professor Carter's room pronto. Si, senor. Was there something else, senor? No, that's all right. Yeah, you can get me the telephone number of the little senorita in the blue dress. Huh? This way, senor. This <laughs> Yes? That's for in line to see Professor Carter. Oh, yes. He's expecting you. Come in. How are you, Professor? Hello, dear sir. Professor Carter, this is Mr. Ryan. How do you do, Mr. How do you do? Gee, I'm glad you're here. I've begun to worry about you. You know, when you're sick, little things upset you. Gracias, señor. What did he do? Ryan came in on schedule, all right. When I found out the Caribbean cruiser was held up at Rio, I decided to double-check everything with Thompson. That's using your head, Dessa. Well, gentlemen, what about a drink? That suits me. Sure. Fix him up, Madden. Okay. I'll help you. So you're Ryan, are you? Yeah, I'm Ryan. Thompson and Dessa recommend you very highly. You don't have to worry about me. If I did, I wouldn't have fired you. Here you are. What do you think of the layout, Ryan? You can't miss. That's why I'm here. No kidding. It's so simple, it's a wonder someone hasn't thought of it before. Well, it may sound simple, but it took time to work out the details. The only thing that kept me from going crazy in a Shanghai jail. Well, how much is there to cut? Close to a half a million. Mm -hmm. It's lying there in the safe in the Caribbean cruiser right now, just waiting for us to take it. Oh, by the way, Dessa. Guess who's the skipper in the cruiser? Who? Hank McFarlane. McFarlane? Yeah. Uh-oh, he's tough, you know that. I haven't forgotten. <laughs> What's so funny? I was just wondering what my old friend McFarlane would think if he knew what was going to happen to him and his passenger. His heart. <laughs> just a moment. Dr. Taylor at the hospital, Captain. McFarlane speaking. How's Jackson doing? Oh, how long do you think he'll be laid up? No, no, we're still waiting on the weather. Oh, that's fine. How is he? He's doing all right. <laughs> Some people all are luck. And what's lucky about an operation? Oh, but look at all the fun he's going to have recuperating in a place like this. There's only one difference between you and Jackson. His case isn't hopeless. What is it? We're to pick up our new purser at Puerto Nueva. Tony Bronson. <laughs> Never heard of him. More grief, I suppose. What do you mean? Stalled by rough weather, place him in the hospital, and now I have to take on a new man. What next? Bronson's okay. I met him a year ago in Miami. You'll like him. Why? Well, well, he's a good man. Smart, gets along well with people. He's a hound for work and keeps his mind on his business all the time. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not Senor Bronson. Now, let's get this straight. In Americano del Norte, I call you Chiquita... I call you Maria, and you call me Tony, Sammy. <laughs> Tony? Tony, that's right. That's the idea. Yeah, well. Excuse me. May I help you? No, oh, thanks. You seem to have your hands full over there. Yes, but that, uh, a little help wouldn't go amiss, would it, uh, miss, if you don't mind? Thanks. You're welcome. Jose. Si, senor. Go to work, will you? Si. <laughs> well, now, where were we? Oh, senor Bronson. Oh, 
That's me. Oh, Pardon me again. Son. Come in, come in. Yes, Jose. Okay, Jose. Those two over there. Give them number three this time, huh? See. Si. This one? That's right. And translate it for him, huh? See, si, senor. Senoritas, el señor Branson les manda esta nota. ¿Qué dice? Yo no sé leer inglés. ¿Qué dice aquí? Que tiene que partir inmediatamente. ¿Ya no va a regresar? No. ¿Vale más irnos? Vámonos. Oh, are you liking our shop, no? Oh, they're wonderful. A bed for my pocketbook. <laughs> I start buying souvenirs and antiques. I never know when to stop. <laughs> This is lucky for Puerto Nuevo. If all they just feel the same way, don't you? <laughs> I guess so. When will the next bulletin be in? They're posted every four hours. Thank you. Give me. You do this all the time? Well, here's one antique I think you better put on ice. Who's your friend? I don't know who he was. I woke up and found him going through my room. Well, that's a lot of nerve in broad daylight. Did you get what he was after? He sure did. He got my bankroll. I won quite a lot of money last night. I probably showed it around. <laughs> Where were you? Oh, I was in several places. I ended up in Sullivan's American Bar. Pretty tight, too. Ah, the same old story. Did you get a look at him? You know who he was? No, I didn't have time. The whole thing happened too quick. Oh, well, maybe you better call the police. Oh, excuse me, I'm Tony Bronson, the TCA. Maybe I can help you. Well, that's an idea. Oh, say, uh, you're the new purser on the Caribbean cruiser, aren't you? Yeah, but how did you know? I only found out myself yesterday. Well, I get paid for being curious and finding out things. I'm Jim Halsey of the New York Dispatch. Not the famous Jim Halsey. <laughs> Skip it. I'm just a reporter covering a lot of territory. Say, uh, by the way, uh, have you any idea when we're going to get out of here? Nope, nothing definite. Well, if that plane doesn't hurry up, I'm going to lose a swell job. How's that? I'm due to leave New York for the Orient in four days. And if I'm not there, somebody else takes my place. I'd sure hate to miss out, brother. <laughs> we almost missed out when that knife came through the window. <laughs> I bet you'll be there. I hope you're right. The handy little gadget. Police will want to see this. Don't touch the handle. Fingerprints and all that sort of stuff, you know? Yeah. I'll get on with you if you like. Okay, thanks. Mind if I take a shortcut? I'll be right back. I live right next door here. Go right ahead. Oh, Bronson. Yeah? Maybe you'd better leave it open. Looks like I need protection. <laughs> <laughs> Say, by the way, uh, are you doing anything tonight? No, why? I'm taking two American gals to dinner. Suppose we make it a foursome. Uh-huh. None of that blind date stuff for me. I like to pick them myself. <laughs> Don't worry. I can pick them, too. Mm -hmm. I've heard that story before. Time and where? 7.30. Downstairs. Okay. That fish smells good. Yeah. Let's hope that clerk downstairs doesn't get a whiff of it. Another one of those, uh, no sabi las regulaciones, senor routines again. Never mind, kid. It won't be long until we're back in the good old USA. Yeah. We can get a plate of ham and eggs without having to draw a picture of tablecloth. Can't come too soon for me. You think Miller will send us our fare? Well, sure, he wouldn't wire us to come home if Ferris didn't want our act, would he? It's two days since we wired him for tickets. If not, it was only yesterday. Uh -uh. Day before yesterday. 
Here's his cable. See the date? We answered him ten minutes later. You think he's sore because we sent it collect? Oh, no, not good old Miller. <laughs> What sweet, sweet words. Here, now you put this in a nice, safe place. Because I'm going to frame that when I get home. <laughs> well, let's tear this herring apart. It'll tide us over till dinner when we eat on Mr. Halsey. And how we'll eat. I don't think I'll impose on Halsey. Isn't it wonderful what a difference a cablegram can make? Listen, sweetheart, you're going to be Jim Halsey's guest tonight, even if Miller sends us enough money to buy a plane. No, I'm not. That's gold digging. Gold digging, she says. I beg your pardon, but this is ethical. Now, look, I knew Jim Halsey in New York, and I meet him here, and he asked me to dinner, and you, too. Do you call gold digging? If I call it promotion, will it make you feel any better? Anne, what's wrong with negotiating a good dinner with a nice man? We enjoy ourselves, and he enjoys himself. We entertain him, and he pays. Everybody's happy. Well, there's nothing wrong with it, I guess. I just don't see things the way you do. No, I guess you don't. Well, come on, let's see. Holy smokes. D just a minute. Get the wash, Ann. Get the wash. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Be right there, senor. All around. Here, here. Oh, it's you. A uh, cablegram. Oh. And get me my purse, will you? <coughs> oh, it, it won't hurt you. It's medicine. Oh. It's for my asthma. <laughs> Transportation. <laughs> Gracias, senorita. How do you like that? It's my best perfume, too. Oh, what have you got? A first class ticket? Oh. Well, that's that. Yeah, now what do we do? Well, I don't know. I gotta get back to New York where we can earn a living. It's a long swim. How about Halsey? Way ahead of you there. Well, here's where little Peggy really goes to work. Negotiating? No. Uh, digging. Just plain digging. You got an extra shovel? Maybe I could help. <laughs> my, my, what a big difference a little cablegram can make. <laughs> You have two girls, I presume. I did an hour ago. I knew Peggy would be late, but I didn't think she'd keep us waiting this long. Hold the fort, will you, Halsey? I'll be right back. Where are you going? Never mind. As soon as we take over the flight deck, they can't do a thing. Now, do you think you know what the inside of a plane looks like? Yeah. All right, that's enough for now. We'll go over this thing again tomorrow. Not so simple after all, is it? Why, it's a cinch. You two handle a ship, me and Lester handle the passengers. We take the dough and scram. The only thing we need is a little luck. Listen, Ryan. Any man that's been flying as long as I have knows you can't depend on luck alone. Sure, but a little never hurts. This perfect crime stuff is the bunk. They always end up with holes in them big enough to drive a truck through. Yeah? Where's the hole in this one? I don't know yet, but one generally shows up, and that's where luck comes in. We're still going to do it my way. Well, now that that's settled, how about some blackjack? That suits me. I'm going to take a walk. Wait a minute, Ryan. Now what is it? Don't leave the hotel. If what is this? All I want to do... I said don't leave the hotel. Okay. I still think I'm right. Aha! There's our meal ticket right over there. Halsey. Well, say, it's uh -uh. about time. Don't say it, Cookie. <laughs> and this is Jim Halsey. <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Halsey? I've enjoyed your articles on South America. Oh, thank you. I didn't think anyone read them. What's this, a cozy little three? <laughs> no, no, just a minute. I've got a very nice boy I want you to meet. He'll be here in just a minute. We'll try this one this time. Si, senor. Are you sure you understand? Completamente. 
This will be the signal. There she is. Now, don't let me down. Okay. Well, I figured that any fellow that was brave enough to tackle another man with a knife would certainly be game enough to meet you two. What a pal. He puts me behind the eight ball before he introduces me. Well, uh, yes. What, uh, no bundles? <laughs> How do you do? Hello. Well, let's sit down and have a little bite. Thanks for introducing oh, yes. me, Halsey. Peggy Morton's the name. Hi, Peggy. Hi. <laughs> All right, Peggy, right over here. Certainly kept the party waiting. Oh, no, no, no. Well, am I still behind the eight ball? <laughs> that depends on a number of things, Mr. Bronson. What, for instance? Well, let's not go into that now. All right. Uh, will you excuse me for just a moment? I'll be right back. Something wrong, senor? Give me, give me, give me. You're fired, my boy. Thank you very much. If I hadn't had a $20 bill in another pants pocket, <laughs> you kids would be buying my dinner tonight. <laughs> oh, it's a great kidder. <laughs> well, where were we? I was just telling the girls it was lucky I paid for my ticket last week or you'd be shy a passenger. Passenger? Yeah, Bronson's with the TCA. Is that so? Yes, I've been with the line ever since I left college. I've just been assigned to the Caribbean cruiser. Pilot? No, I'm the purser. Uh, did you say purser? Uh-huh. Well, um, then you have charge of tickets and reservations, don't you? Yes, I'm responsible for all the passengers from the time they check on the plane until we land. Isn't that interesting? Is it? Oh, yes. <laughs> it is. Well. He has charge of the tickets. I heard him the first time. What's that? Oh, just singing. Oh, happy, huh? <laughs> um. uh, oh, Anne, have you got your compact with you? Why, yes, I think so. You know the one Miller sent you? Remember? Oh, I... Uh, I, I forgot it. Oh, well, it's on the bureau. I put it there. You remember. I'll be right there. She's really very clever. She writes all the material for our acts, such as it is. <laughs> hey, Peggy's quite a press agent for you. She's been telling us oh, all about... Oh, wait a minute. I suppose she's been telling you what a great writer I am and what a ham she is. Or was it the other way around? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> she tell you about our offer? Not a word. Oh, she wouldn't. Looks as if we're finally going to get a break. You know, it's funny when you're tramping Broadway day after day looking for a job, they can't see you. But now that you're 3,000 miles away, they think you're good and send for you. Be a strange bit of... No kidding. Look, we just got this this afternoon. Well, this is great. Does this mean you're going to be my passenger? We don't have our reservation. Well, there's no time like the present. What are we waiting for? We wired for transportation, but it hasn't arrived yet. Well, you let me know as soon as you can. I'll be glad to take care of it for you. Thanks, that's awfully kind of you. Shall uh, we let Mr. Bronson take care of our tickets? Oh, as far as I'm concerned, he's practically elected. Come on, kids. Close the ticket window. Let's eat. All right. Boy, I'm hungry. Hey, wait a minute. How much butter is it? Oh, come on, Peggy. Be a sport. Uh-uh. It's the end of the line for me. But just a little further on, there's a wonderful view of the ocean in the moonlight. I'll take my moon sitting right here as my feet hurt. Come on, Tony. You still have one customer. Well, we won't be long. We'll meet you right back here. All right. We're waiting for you. Come on, Peggy. Sit down for a few minutes. Careful. Oh. You know, sometimes you have pretty good ideas, Peggy. Yeah, they're pretty good most of the time. The problem is to make them work. That's always. After you have an idea, you've got to sell it. And sometimes the selling isn't easy. Well, I'm surprised to hear you say that. Why? I've got an idea right now, but I'm not sure I can sell it. Could I help? I don't know anyone better. Okay, let's have it. <clears throat> well, uh, I have a friend who's been all over the world and met all kinds of people. And it wasn't until last year he met a girl in New York he felt he could really go for. He would have told the girl just how he felt about her, only she was earning more than he was. Well, since then, things have changed. And now... 
This fella has really got himself a swell job. With the New York Dispatch, his name is Jim Halsey, but Peggy says no. <laughs> well, I thought it was a good idea. Oh, it was a lovely idea, Jim, but it won't work. You mustn't let a little tropical moonlight spoil a good friendship. Let's just keep it give and take, huh? Yeah. I give, and you... That's it, brother. Ooh. There, isn't that worth the climb? Oh, it's beautiful. I'm glad we came. So am I. Every time I come up here, it gives me a thrill. I suppose you always come alone. No, not always. <laughs> At least you're honest. Is that unusual? Yes. And surprising. Surprising? Yes. How did you get away from those two charming young ladies in the patio? Oh, that. Well, uh, that's a long story. Well, let's not talk about me. Tell me something about you. What would you like to know? Large ordered. Well, for a starter, uh, wouldn't it be down here? Oh, things were pretty tough in New York, so we took 12 weeks booking down here. We opened for two weeks in Rio, and then we've been playing a week here and there up the coast. Now it looks as if we're going to get a chance to get back on Broadway. That's great. It's a good break for you, huh? Mm-hmm. And your new job's a break for you, isn't it? Yeah. There you have it. Double feature success story. <laughs> Let's get Halsey to write it up, huh? <laughs> You know, Ann, yesterday I couldn't wait for that plane to arrive. Today I don't care if it ever comes. <laughs> That's a fine statement for a budding young executive to make. I mean it. I'm serious. This is marvelous. Is it, Tony? Yes. You know, Ann, life is funny. You kick about things not happening the way you think they should, like this plane being late. And all of a sudden you realize it's the most important thing that could have happened to you. What was? You. Wait a minute. I'm trying to tell you something. I guess there's only one way to tell you. Hiya. Everything all set? Hey, what matter? We can't take that plane, Peggy. Don't tell me Tony turned you down. No, but I can't go through with it. I just can't. I... I like him a lot, and I'm not going to cheat him. Take it easy. We aren't cheating him. We're going to pay him back. No matter what you say, it's wrong. Don't tell me you broke down and gave the whole thing away. No. He still thinks the radiogram's okay, and he knows we need money for reservations. But you didn't ask him to trust us for the tickets, did you? No, and I'm not going to. And if you try to, I'll tell him the truth. Okay. I'll get it. Hello there. Uh, for Senorita Howard, compliments of Senor Bronson. Senor Bronson? Si. Oh, thanks. Gracias, guys. No, I think okay. Yeah. <laughs> God. The way I thought you were talking, I thought it was all off. <laughs> the way I feel it is. Wow. Wow. Tickets. You didn't ask for them and he gave them to you anyway? Baby, it's time I was taking lessons from you. And it's encouraging to note the effect of the American good neighbor policy in such a small town as Puerto Nueva. That's all for today. I'll cover the cotton angle tomorrow. Come in. What's that? Oh, just a minute. Any news of the plane? Not a word. Don't know. Still waiting for it. Oh, by the way, here's a little item for the drama editor. Ann Howard and Peggy Morton, young American comedians who have recently completed a successful engagement in Buenos Aires, 
had just been signed by Ned Ferris for his new review. And I'm returning to New York on the Caribbean cruiser. Sure they're here. I had dinner with them last night. I saw the radiogram myself. When did that happen? Uh-oh. Okay. I hope when I call you tomorrow, it'll be from the plane. <laughs> Those little gold diggers. Gold diggers? Yeah, Ann and Peggy. I don't follow you. Who are you talking to? The New York office. The rewrite man just told me that Ned Paris died four days ago and that the show closed. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> What's the joke? Joke? That means the radiogram the girl showed us last night was a fake. A fake? But why would they show us it? Now, just a minute. They showed us that message last night at dinner, didn't they? Remember them telling us they received it that same afternoon and that they were waiting for a check? That's right. Well, what more do you want? <laughs> Peggy's up to her old tricks. It's a good thing she knew I didn't have any cash or she'd have had it by now. Oh, so that's it. Well, it looks like I've been the number one sap this time. Now look, Ann, if we just take oh, this... Oh, Peggy, why go all over this again? I told you the way I feel. I'm going to tell Tony the truth. Oh, why not be sensible? You're letting this get you down. Once we get to New York, we'll get a job, pay Tony back, and everything will be lovely. You call that being sensible? I sure do. Well, I don't. If I had any sense, I wouldn't have started it in the first place. Oh, a fine thing. We've got a smart client, and it works. But you had to spoil it by falling in love. I'm sorry, Peggy. Oh. Hello? Mr. Bronson, please. Well, do you know where he went? All right, thanks. Hey, where are you going? Sullivan's American Bar. And you can't go there by yourself. Can't I? You watch me. Well, of all the stubborn little... Hello. Uh, oh, uh, well, oh, get me Jim Halsey, please. Hello? Hello? Hello, Jim? Jim, this is Peggy. Yeah, Ann and I have had an argument. She's gone down to Sullivan's to meet Tony. I want you to take me there. Okay, Peggy. Yeah, I'll meet you downstairs in five minutes. Oh, Peggy. Something backfire? Huh? What do you think? Hmm. <laughs> No quiero canela, quiero tequila. Ahora me quiero tequila, papi. No le des tequila, pero. ¿Y por qué no? No, tequila. No, tequila. 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 You looking for somebody, lady? Yes. Have you seen Tony Bronson? I don't know him. Take a seat. I'll see if he's around here. Thank you. If anybody gets fresh with it, just holler for Butch. That's me. <laughs> well, this is a pleasant surprise. Is it? Yeah. You know, ever since I first saw you around the hotel, I, I wanted to say hello. So I've noticed. <laughs> that calls for a drink. What do you have? Nothing. I'm waiting for someone. Fine. If it's your girlfriend, we'll make a party of it. I'm not the kind of guy. Please have a drink with me. No, thanks, really. What's the matter, aren't you? Well, you're a pretty fast worker, aren't you? What are you trying to get out of him? Why, well, Tony, what do you mean? I'll tell you what I mean. Come on, I want to talk to you. Hey, what's the idea? You stay out of this, will you? Wait a minute. Now, look, mister, I want to talk to this lady and alone. Maybe she doesn't want to listen to you. She'll listen to me whether she likes it or not. Nobody's going to stop me. No? No. Hey, wait a minute. What's going on here? Oh, it's all right. Just a personal argument, that's all. I'm going. That's a good idea. Tony, let's get out of here. We're not going anywhere. I want to talk to you. Come on, sit down. Tony, I just came here to tell you... You've done your talking, and what a line. Please. Shut up. Come on, outside. All right, all right. Did you use 20 bucks? Well, who could? Well, look. All right, okay, get some. I want you to... You couldn't be on the level if you wanted to. 
You fake a radiogram, feed me a pack of lies, and make a sap out of me. You're a better actress than I thought you were. Won't you give me a chance to you tell you... You missed your chance. If you'd have told me the truth, I'd been glad to help you. Won't you let me explain? You don't need to explain. I know all the answers. You pulled a fast one on me. You were getting away with it, too, until Halsey accidentally spilled the beans. You're nothing but a cheap little gold digger. Are you quite sure you're all through? And how? Okay, Santa Claus. Then thanks for the tickets. No. Say, what's the idea? Starting more trouble? What do you mean? I'm not starting any trouble. Oh, the best place for you is outside. Oh, Come take your hands off of me, will you? What's the idea? fresh, huh? Wait. Oh, oh, man, this man started here. two fights in one night here. What are you talking about? I didn't start any fight. Oh, you the For disturbing the peace and assaulting an officer. Come on. Wait a minute. You got the wrong idea. Now, wait a minute. Don't say a word, Tony. What do you mean, don't say a word? This guy deliberately bumps into me, starts an argument, takes a poke at me. What is it? Don't say yeah, a word. Bumping at me again, I'll take another poke. Come on, you there right now. Wait a minute. What is this? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. What was that all about? I don't know. It looks like Tony was framed, if you ask me. Now listen, I'm going to the police station. I'm quite sure I can fix it up. You two kids go on back to the hotel and wait for me. It'll only be a few minutes. Everything is going to be okay. Leave it to me. Did you give him back the tickets? No. Here, you keep them, just in case I weaken. Now I can relax. And don't you worry. Jim Halsey will fix it all up fine. And when Tony cools off, you can explain everything to him. The only time I'll ever speak to him again is when I pay him back for those tickets. Come on, let's get out of here. Gracias. Adios. My friends say both the senores is in the calabozo right now. Both of them? Si, both of them. He he do what he can, but they didn't want to wait to do something until tomorrow morning either. Jim certainly fixed it all right. I can't understand it. Well, let's see if there's another bulletin. First, we had men and no tickets. Now we have tickets and no men. <laughs> you know, Anne, I think we're going to New York without a purser. It's perfectly all right with me. <laughs> you see, sir, I... No use discussing this any further. You know the rules of the company as well as I do. If there had been another purser available, you'd still be in jail. Don't try to thank me. That's all. Aye, aye, sir. Okay, Dick, thanks. I'll take over. How'd you make out? I didn't. Got the tickets, Peggy? Yeah, I got them. But I hope they're good. What do you mean? Well, he's the purser, remember? For all we know, he might have canceled them. Well, there's only one way to find out. Come on. <sighs> well, how about it? Let's go. Take it easy, Ryan. There's still six minutes before takeoff time. What's this going to be? A hundred yard dash? Listen, you. I've got this time to hit the float two minutes before takeoff. That still gives us only four more minutes, and we've got to get down there. All right, let's go. Get the blanket, Madden. Right with you. Wait a minute. All right. There you are. How does this look, Madden? Okay to me. If McFarland himself is on the float, he'll never know you. Okay, let's go. Gee, I looked all over for you. Where were you? In the lion's den. And? 
Goodbye, Bronson, at Miami. Cheer up. I got a lot of strings I can pull there. I know, like the strings you pulled here, huh? No. Anyway, I don't think McFarland can make that stick. You don't know McFarland. And you don't know Halsey. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Count up to ten, pal. Tickets, please. Oh, yes, we have them. It's uh, compartment E. I must see your tickets, please. See? Miss Morton? That's me. Miss Howard? Miss Howard? That's her. Rodriguez? Yes? Compartment E. All right, sir. I was afraid you weren't going to make it. Sister, you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> Tickets, please. Thank you. Mr. Desser? That's me. Mr. Carter? Yeah. Mr. Madden? Uh-huh. Mr. Ryan? Yeah. Mr. Ryan. Stand by to cast off. Ready for take. Twenty-seven. Is this bourbon? Yes, sir. Madam, we'll not let your personal matters interfere with our plans. Don't worry, I'll take care of them in my spare time. See to do at six. My passengers. Moping. You're in love with him. Why don't you go find him and pop and get it off your chest? <laughs> Could have canceled those tickets, you know, but he didn't. Gee, I wish I was sitting as pretty as you are. Here's little Peggy, just crazy over a guy named Jim Halsey, and I don't dare let him know it. Why not? Why? Because he'd ask me to marry him again. I know it wouldn't work. Oh, well, look at his job. Here today, China tomorrow, Egypt the day after. First thing you know, he'll be married to a string of telegrams. Sorry, dear, but I'm leaving to the North Pole. Please send my winter underwear. See you next summer. Kind of a life is that for a gal who wants a home and a little garden and chicken. Come in. Well, I've got to hand it to you two kids. You say put it over. Big trick to play on a nice fellow like Tony. Oh, if I hear any more about that, I'll scream. Uh, 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 watch your blood pressure, dearie. Buy me a drink, will you, Halsey? Yes, come on. Celebrate, Peggy. Celebrate what? My new job and the fact that I'm going to get back in time to take it. Didn't I tell you about it? No, where are you going now? The end. Gee, Peggy, I've been angling for that for three years. Well, uh, how long are you going to be gone, Jim? Oh, I don't know. Maybe a year, maybe two. It all depends on what I run into. Isn't that great? Yeah, that's great. You know, Peggy, it's sure funny how things change. What do you mean? Well, the last time we were celebrating Tony's new job, and I wasn't sure about mine. Now, I'm all set, and Tony isn't. But, uh, that's life, isn't it? Yeah, that's life. Stuart, Stuart. Service is not so good. Barton speaking. Okay, Stephen, I'll report at once. Oh, Tony, send the steward in here, will you? Yeah, all right. Hold it. What's 
the idea. Shut up. Where's the steward? Aft in the deluxe compartment. How many passengers in the line? Four. All right, now listen. We're going to send these people to their compartments, and you're going to lock them in. Now remember, I'm right behind you. And I don't like you anyway. Okay? Okay. Let's go. Feeling any better? Yes. Yeah. Sit down. Now just take it easy. No one will get hurt. <gasps> All right. Get over there. Get over by the purser. Not you two, just him. Why, I... You... You... What? Do you know what they do to people like you? I know what I'll do to you if you don't stop yapping. Cut that out. to your compartment. Cut it, Lee. All right, break it up, break it up. Why, you... Hold it, Ryan. You made one mistake, don't be a fool and make another. Besides, we need him. Just relax. I've taken over the ship for a while. Come here. Open that safe. Do whatever these thugs tell you to. We'll catch up with them later. You hurry them, purser. Open the safe. But chief, the that's an order. I helped put you in jail once, Carter. You'll go to the death house for this one. Yeah? Well, listen, McFarlane. It wasn't my plan to kill anyone. If near a navigator had used their heads, they'd still be alive. Safe open. Another job for you, Purser. Keep the passengers quiet. We're going to land soon. After that, they're free to come and go as they please, as long as they keep away from the flight deck stairs. Understand? Turn them over to Ryan. All right, come on, Gil. Oh, by the way, you can feed them if you like. If they don't like our service, tell them to complain to the line. <laughs> Get going. All right, McFarlane, on your feet. Put these men in the anchor room. All right, get going. All right, all right. Take them down below, men. Right. All right, move along. We don't need him anymore, so if he gets tough... All right, into your compartments. Everybody. Give me your key. in the anchor room and help Matt tie them up. Sure, sure. When do we land? We should get there about 2 o'clock. Here's where we changed our course to due east. Here's where we are now. These here are the shores. That'll be it. As soon as we land, go down and break out one of those light anchors. You'll need about 100 fathoms of line. I'll take her down. Cruise 
to disappear. <laughs> what a headline that will be. Sure did a good job of tying. How you coming, Stevens? Not so good. How long do you think we've been down here, Captain? About a half an hour, I'd say. Well, we, we sat down at two. They're expecting their plane here at three. That means we've still got 30 minutes. That's right. I think Carter was trying to scare you when he said he'd set the ship on fire before he left. No, you're wrong, Stevens. I know Carter, he'll do what he says. That's his getaway. I wonder what they've done with Bronson and the passengers. Well, nothing like a spot of tea for the nerves, eh, buddy? Hey, where are you going? None of your business. Looks like our only chance to get a gun is from Ryan. Well, do you think we can rush him? No. We've got to trick him some way. Well, maybe I could make a play for him and get his gun. You might get tickets that way, but not guns. This is a man's job. You didn't get very far when you tried it. Now, look, Branton. I've got an idea. Suppose I go back into my compartment. Two ounce purser and uh, not too strong. Uh, yes, ma'am. And for you? None for me, thanks. Make mine pretty strong. Right. None for me. Can't you get that awful man to put that gun away? If he points it at me again, I'll scream. Well, I'm sorry, madam, but if you'll just go to your compartment, we're doing the best we can. Oh, please do something about it. Yes, ma'am. Come on, Bronson. Let's go in my cabin. We can figure it out in there. Too many interruptions here. Go on, Peggy. This is the galley door. Here are the steps that lead to the flight deck. This is the spot where he's been standing. Right in back of him is a door. you that I'm sorry for what happened at the bar at Puerto Nuevo. Oh, that's all right, honey. Forget it. Bad start never bothers me. Won't you sit down? Thanks. Boy, this is the first chance I've had to relax since we took off. What about me? Yeah, it's been kind of tough on you, hasn't it, kid? Well, don't you worry. You've got one friend. I'll take care of you. But, Mr. Mr. Ryan's the name. Mr. Ryan? I don't understand it. What's going on on this ship? Oh, don't you worry your pretty little head about that. Nothing's going to happen to you. You know something, baby? When this is over, I'm going to have a barrel of dough. And I'll need somebody to help me spend it. Now, what do you say? Shall we make up for the time we lost in Porto Nova? Sounds all right to me. Now, who's going to take care of who? Give me that gun. You stay where you are. Get 
Give me that gun. Hi, oh, Van. Lock us in. Get that door open. Anybody got a knife? Yes. The next time you try to shoot somebody, I'd advise you to take off the safety. You've really got what it takes. You little double-crosser. Hi, Is that it? Quiet, quiet. Take it easy now. Take a good look down the hall before you go out. I got his gun for you, didn't I? You crazy little fool, trying a thing like this. You're just lucky that it worked out all right, and... And and what, Tony? Nothing. I heard that shot on the flight deck, they'll all be down here. You people get to the back of the ship. Go down and see what's happened. Right. I don't know, but they must have got his gun. Get down. I thought you might need some more ammunition. We'll be all right as long as they get up here. Yeah, but we gotta get that gun. We will. You stay here. Come on. Tony, I want to tell you something. There's no time to talk. Well, you can listen, can't you? I can't help myself. Well, you're going to listen to Tony Bronson, whether you like it or not. It's awful quiet. Maybe Tony got him. Maybe they're all dead. He got me in the hand. Watch those stairs. What's that? Oh, it's over there. Yes? Where's Brunson? Well, put him on the line, quick. Okay, Napoleon. He wants Tony on the phone. Huh? Yeah, yeah, go get him, go get him. And I only came down there, Tony, to tell you the truth. So you see, if you'd only listened to me, everything might have been different. Sorry, Anna. Captain and the crew. But you can't do a thing. Well, what is it, yes or no? The others have as much to say about that gun as I have. Give me five minutes to persuade them. All right, but that's the deadline. What's it all about? If we don't hand over that gun in five minutes, they're going to kill the skipper and the crew. Oh, dear. Nice boys. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to gamble with that five minutes. Get Halsey, will you? Here. You think they'll give up the gun? Sure they will. What else can they do? Relax, relax. What are you going to do? I'm going to take a long chance. Now look, if I'm not back by... ten minutes to three, Ring that phone and give up the gun. Crouch, put out the lights, will you? Tony. Don't worry, Ann. Keep your fingers crossed. Turn on the lights. And he's going to get fired. If we ever get to Miami. I'll get out of these ropes if I have to cut off a wrist. Shut up, William, shut up. What's that?
Bronson. Bronson? Yes, he's outside. We've got to open that door. See if you can make it, Anderson. Nice going, Bronson. Well, there's no use waiting any longer. Get it over with. Wait a minute. Yes? Okay. We quit. Go down and get the gun. Listen, Bronson. There's a plane coming to pick up these murderers. I know, I know. And Carter's going to set the ship on fire before they leave. What? Yeah. Untie the others, Williams. Right. Yeah? Yeah, but what happened to Ryan? He's dead. And that purse is missing. Never mind the purser now. I've just had a call from the plane. Come on back. She'll be here any minute. Okay. Come on, Anne. Snap out of it. Everything's under control. Hey, Carter. Hold it. Put those guns on the table. Then I'll take over. Bronson, you and Anderson take these fellows down and tie them up. Stevens, get on that radio. Contact Miami and get them. Let me talk to them. Yes, sir. Williams, you take care of the passengers. All right, now, come, come on. on, snap into it. Come Williams, on, get up. my clothes, will you? They're in the lounge. Come okay, on. Johnny. Come on, get there. Come on. Good job of tying up, will you? See what we do. Caribbean cruiser, calling Miami. Come in, Miami. If something doesn't happen soon, I'm going up there myself. Why, it's one of the officers. Where's Tony? On the flight deck. Is he all right? Yeah. He'll be down later. Now, we're taking off in just a few minutes, and we'll only be about four hours late getting into Miami. That's it. How soon can I get a radiogram off to my paper? Well, I'm sorry, sir, but under the circumstances, we're not sending any no messages. The newspapers will get the story as soon as we land. But listen, my job depends on it. Captain, has anybody seen Mr. Bronson's... Yeah, yeah, they're right over there. Oh, thank you. Tough break, Jim. Looks like you're not going to make that a job in the Orient, huh? Yeah, looks like it. I'm sorry. Thanks, Peggy, but you got me wrong. I was just thinking how glad I am that I can't get back in time to take it. What? Yeah, you know, for the last five years, I've been trying to make up my mind to quit batting around the world and settle down to something I really want to do. And it took something like this to make me do it. Huh? I'm quitting the newspaper racket. I've got a hobby I'm going to turn into a business. Do you know what it is? No, what? Raising tulips. Raising tulips? Well, go on and laugh if you want to, but there's money in it. And especially now with the war on. Well, if you, uh, you, you raise tulips in the country, don't you? Yeah, sure. On a farm? Well, they don't grow on Broadway. A farm. You can count me in, Jim. Fine. Now, as soon as I get back to... Huh? Oh, Bronson. Yes, sir? Tell the passengers to get ready for a takeoff. Aye, right, sir. Uh, just a minute. I, uh, 
I hope you'll be with me a long time, Tony. Thank you, sir. Tony! Purser. Oh, pardon me. I, I was just going up to congratulate the captain. Well, he's uh, really quite busy now, Mrs. Oh. Pettengill. I... Oh, all right. Excuse me. You think he'd be down later? I really don't know, Mrs. Pettengill. Why don't you just sit right down here? That way you can't possibly well, I miss think him. I will. Yeah. Oh. Wait till we get to Miami. Troops and chickens. Boy, that's the life. Uh, maybe at first you could write a few articles, now and then. Oh, no, I'm going to be too busy for that. Oh, maybe, you know, after we get on a paying basis, I may write a book or so, it all depends. Uh, Jim, not that it matters, but, uh, I'll see you to see proposals to who. You lose. <laughs> <laughs>